guys, welcome to Carol's Universe Tarot Readings, Tarot Readings from the Heart. Sorry, I'm keep flicking my hair uh, <laughs> because I read it and it's just getting in the way. It's doing my head in a little bit, but there you go. Hope you're all really, really well. Um, yeah, I'm not too bad. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for your messages of support. I know that I wasn't looking too great on a lot of the videos over the last few months. I was going through a lot of shit at work. I'm going to do a video on it anyway. Uh, message of encouragement, message of thanks, because you guys know that I think it was maybe July or something like that, June, July, I didn't record at all, and I was going through some real bad shit in the workplace, and I feel that I want to kind of, with this channel, I don't just want it just to be about the readings, I want you guys to actually get to know me, who I am, what I'm about, that type of thing, and you know, I've got some really great supporters on this channel, and I just want to say thank you to everyone who has liked my video, subscribed, ordered a reading, um, you know, I just want to really just pour out my heart and say thank you so much, guys. Um, and now that I've left the job, I finished on Friday the 13th, wouldn't you know. Uh, it wasn't a great day for me, that wasn't. But, um, yeah, I'm slowly but surely getting better. Um, I'm starting to get my mojo back a bit, so I'm feeling a bit better inside of myself. I'm getting back to the way that I used to look and feel confident and all the rest of it. So things are generally picking up, and I'm starting to feel... A little bit more like Carol. So, uh, yeah, let's let's see your reading, Aries. If you'd like a private reading with me, you can go to my website. It's www.carolsuniverse.co.uk. It's very, very successful. Go and have a look at all of my um, all of my uh, testimonials. A lot of people very impressed with the readings. Uh, and I love tarot reading, so there you go. You can have a look there. Also, if you want to make a donation, you can. I know that a lot of people don't have money, so that's absolutely fine. It's no issue, no biggie. But if you want to, you can. Okay, the donation button is actually at the top of my my uh, homepage on the web on the website. So, what have we got coming in for you in December 2015, Aries? Now I've got all the cards already pre-shuffled, and I decided to do it this way because I feel that I want to like make notes what comes into my head when I'm looking at the cards. And sometimes when I do it like that on a reading, um, just kind of ad hoc like that, it's fine. But I don't feel like I get out everything that I want to say in a reading, so I just thought I'd like to prepare them month in, month out from now on, before I have to go back to another day job, if I have to go back to another day job, hopefully not. So, um, what's your general energy, Aries, for the month of uh, December 2015? We've got the Queen of Swords, and we also have uh, the Five of Wands. So it just seems here, and, I, you know, this isn't a bad reading, and I know it's Christmas, and I have no intentions of giving bad readings over Christmas, but I'm always honest with the readings. And whatever comes out in the reading, whatever comes out in the card, guys, comes out in the card. Don't shoot the messenger, okay? I'm just flicking the cards, meditating on them for Aries, sun, moon, rising signs, and this is what comes up. But it's not a bad reading. It's more a reading of how to deal with people who might annoy us, people who might get at us, people who might want war. And it's really saying this is the Christmas period, so just kind of hold it down a little bit. Just kind of hold back on shit, you know. If, if You know, whether this is in your family, whether this is in a work environment, whether this is even a relationship, you know, don't rock the boat. Just kind of back down a little bit and go with the flow. Now, the Queen of Swords, who is she? Um... The archetype of the Queen of Swords is uh, usually should be probably be thought of as a widow or divorced or a single woman, probably middle aged, has probably has no children. She's usually seen as quite an uh, independent, cold woman, but she's also seen as someone who is very fair, someone who really thinks out situation. She's probably a little bit stronger than the, the King of Swords in that, in that she probably takes time to, she doesn't just cut to the chase, she really takes time to think about a decision that she's going to make, right? She can be seen as ruthless. Um, she's probably the coldest queen or seen as the coldest queen. She's got a lot of good stuff about her, the Queen of Swords. Okay, she's an air sign. So she's um, Libra, she's uh, Gemini, or she's an Aquarius uh, character, okay? She's very successful. She's very smart. She's very blunt. You know, there's no two ways about it. This woman doesn't really mess around. She just kind of like, you know, she says whatever is on her mind, okay? Even though she's very kind of um, tactful with it as well. So if you think about, I don't know, maybe Alexis of Dynasty or something like that. She's kind of like that kind of type of character. Um, 
she plays it. She's very intuitive as well. This is, this is why she takes time to kind of think logically about stuff before she actually makes a clear cut decision on it. Okay, she's always thinking. She's very intuitive. She's very in tune with her own emotions because swords aren't just about the way we think. They're not just about uh, challenges. Every challenge we go through, everything that we think as people is derived from emotion. It's grounded in an emotional situation. It's as simple as that. Everything that happens in life whether it's something that's made, whether it's something that's said, whether it's a song that's written, whatever it is, there's always an emotion behind it. So that is the foundation of life, emotion. And she really takes her emotions and takes time to think about it and then thinks rather than from a heart space, a head space. She is uh, the type of woman that will listen to her head first, as I've said, and consider her options before she trusts her heart. So I feel that with this as your first kind of general energy, along with the five of wands it's saying think before you act okay it is saying think before you act because if you look at the queen of swords she's holding her hand out as if to say you know come on come on do you want to fight do you want to do you know what i mean she's holding out her hand as if to say do you want to fight but then she's kind of holding her sword up as a defense mechanism to kind of stop so it's almost like this card is saying think before you act okay you might want to go jump into something with someone over the christmas period but don't go there, even if it's like a family fight, whether it's a work fight, whether it's somebody that's enticing you. The Five of Wands, um, this is your sign, okay? So I don't know whether it's you guys that are causing any friction, okay? I don't know whether the Queen of Swords is an external character, uh, but I feel that uh, Aries, it's got to be you somewhere along the line because we've got the Queen of Wands sitting here as well, and this is definitely you guys, all right? But I feel that uh, with these two energies here, they're both very kind of, the five of wands is a very fiery energy. So that five of wands is usually about petty annoyances, fruitless arguments. On the Rider weight deck, that five of wands shows five children holding their sticks together, okay? So there's no way out of something. It's a fruitless argument. It's a pointless argument because nobody wins. OK, so I feel that those two energies are saying, you know, it's Christmas time. If you have any kind of arguments with anyone, put it to bed. Don't get into too much uh, friction with people or situations this Christmas and really just kind of try and temper it and try and hold back on stuff. It's not always easy to do that, Aries, but you are a fire sign. So we know that a lot of you guys probably have tempers. You'll probably like act and then think about it later. But this card is saying think before you act this is what these two energies are saying to me aries for the month of uh for the month of uh, uh, december 2015 think before you act and i feel that you know if that queen of swords isn't an external person then really this is the energy that everybody can tap tap into which is really to think about things before we actually do them because sometimes when we just go head first uh, not head first, when, when we let our emotions rule us, and fire is emotion, fire, passion, all of that comes from how we feel as people, so it is, again, grounded in emotion. Sometimes when we let our hearts rule our heads, we can make the wrong decision, and this is really saying that you need to kind of tap into uh, tap into thinking about things before you do them, and it's, it's funny, because as your general theme for the month, we have the Two of Cups. Now, the Two of Cups uh, is basically a card about togetherness, all right? This can in, uh, be indicative of a love relationship. It can be indicative of a business partnership. It can be uh, indicative of coming together as a whole, as one person, because it's both male and female energies together. So it's about coming together as a person. It's about close friendships, that type of thing. But on the whole, the Two of Cups, what uh, the basis of that card is about, Aries, is negotiation. Okay, it's two parties to coming together to negotiate something, whether that's on a romantic level, uh, a platonic level, a business level, whatever that means, this is two parties to coming together. And I feel that the general energy, Aries, is really saying to you for the month of December, you know, peace is the best, is the best thing to have. Peace, this advice is saying that you need to negotiate any differences that you've got. And this is what the Queen of Swords says, she's negotiating. In one way, she wants to join in the fight, but in another way, she's kind of like, no, I'm going to hold up my barriers here, and I'm just going to kind of 
be part one foot in the door and one foot kind of out of the door. I don't want to show no fear, but then I don't want to really kind of go straight into the ruckus, okay? And really, this is saying that you need to balance those energies out. And all through the reading, it's about balance, uh, Aries. It's about balancing that, that fire energy, calling that fire energy that you guys have. And as I've said, that if you just go straight into something without even thinking about it and your passion drives you, sometimes that's when major mistakes can be made. So if there is any kind of ruckuses over Christmas, if you're having anything like that right now, then you really need to think about what you do before you act. Think first and then decide on a proper course of action. And the proper course of action is your advice card, negotiation, balance, coming together, that type of thing over the Christmas period, okay? So it's about joy. It's about making peace. And I feel that this, this reading is about making peace. Now, the events for uh, Christmas or over the December uh, period, we've got the hanged man followed by the star. Now, the hanged man is an interesting card because to me, when I look at the hanged man, he's enduring something and he's enduring something that is very, very uncomfortable. Being hung, as I always say, if I were to be hung up upside, uh, upside down on a tree uh, where my body is contorted in a very, very uncomfortable way, I would uh, have to endure that. OK, and it's a test of strength. I always look at the hanged man as being a test of endurance and strength because you'd have to be tested mentally and physically and emotionally to sit there for the whole of time like that on a card. I know that this person has no emotion on the card, but just looking at him on that card and he's stuck forevermore like that, that's really strength and endurance. So I really believe that the hanged man card is rooted in that first and foremost. I also look at that card and I feel that uh, it's about transition and changing the way that we think about things because this guy has to do that. He has to accept the limitation and when you accept the limitation of something, that's when you can accept it. You can accept maybe this isn't going to happen. Maybe this relationship isn't going to happen. Maybe we're never going to see eye to eye, but I can accept that and I can accept our differences, that type of thing. So I feel that um, this card is saying that you need to let go of something that is painful in order to have something new come in. So whether that's letting go of um, old transgressions, old uh, uh differences old arguments it's saying just let it go allow uh it doesn't affect your strength because if it's a difficult situation that you're enduring aries at the moment then you've done really well this to me is a card of um sacrifice so it's sacrificing your comfort in order to kind of move on to the next stage I always look at this card as being kind of like the purgatory card. Until this person has le learned their lessons, they're not kind of taken out of that limiting, um, out of that limiting uh, situation or condition. I also look at the hangman and feel that it's this person on the card is a no limit person. And what I mean by a, a no limit person is in life, a lot of us kind of limit ourselves to uh, certain conventions certain ways of doing things, certain ways of thinking about things. And with the hanged man, he has to let go of convention. He has to be a no limit person because you'd have to be no limit to be hanging upside down like that. So he has to kind of endure. And when you're a no limit person, endurance becomes easy. OK, taking the hard knocks becomes easy because you know you're going to get through it. You know it's not going to be forever. And you know that all the trials and tribulations that you go through are there to move you on to the next stage. So I feel that whatever these energies are that are showing up, the Queen of Swords, the Five of Wands, tempering, because swords are steel and they're cold, okay? What does coldness do against fire? It doubts it, whether that's water or whether that's ice, okay? It definitely doubts it, okay? But it's almost like it's saying, don't put your sword into the fire, because it is made of, even though it's cold, it's also made of steel, which means that the sword gets hot. So it's almost like don't uh, involve yourself in any kind of um, issues where you're going to get burnt. This is what I'm feeling here. Instead, it's best just to temper it. Instead, it's best just to think rather than act off your emotions or off your fire or off your energy. Don't just because a lot of people are energy junkies. They kind of act off their energy. So they're kind of really kind of uh, what's the word? 
not impetuous, is it? It's, uh, can somebody give me a word? They act without thinking. It's just that immediate reaction that they have, and they just act. And this is saying temper it. And this is what the hanged man does. The first thing I would want to do if I was hanging upside down like that is wriggle, but he stays still. So there is strength in stillness. And this is really what it's saying here. There is strength in stillness. We can kind of temper any situation and we can have a very good negotiation if we just hold back. And this is what is coming up with the star card next. The star card is a card of hope, inner peace, creativity, healing, um, physical and emotional healing. So it's almost like it's saying that through accepting the limitation of the situation, there will be a lot of healing for you. And there is healing with the hand man because he has time to think, to reflect and to really become kind of comfortable in his discomfort. And I'm not saying that if somebody is really getting at you at work that you ought to take it and just lie down and do nothing about it. But there are ways and means in arguments of solving them rather than direct kind of physical fights or, or verbal fights, that type of thing. So it's really saying, you know, with the hanged man, endurance, uh, uh sacrificing the need to kind of wriggle and to kind of move the situation in stillness there is healing okay so when you temper something when you kind of are very calm you can heal there's a lot of healing in silence all right so whether that's withdrawing from an argument or withdrawing from something within the workplace or the family life or with a friend in your silence and in your calmness there will be healing okay and it's a very wise move to do because the star card is all about wisdom so it's about using our intuition to create our conditions. The star card is like the second wish card within the tarot besides the nine of cups. OK, so the star card is about inner healing. It's about wisdom. It's about intuition. It's about trusting in a higher force. So this guy on the hand man, he's really trusting in a higher force. He really is. And we can see around his head. There's almost something that shows him as being a saint. And a lot of saints had to sacrifice stuff. So this isn't saying that you are you are consciously trying to be a saint, but if you act in a saintly way, you're going to be blessed through it. Remember, our behaviours create our conditions. So sometimes in the silence, in the endurance, in the holding back, we can create a more peaceful situation for ourselves. We also have the temperance card showing alongside the Queen of Wands, Aries. Very, very interesting because the Queen of Wands, again, we have cool and fire, cool and fire, cool and fire, cool and fire with the Queen of Swords and the Five of Wands, cool and fire with the Temperance card and the Queen of Wands. Queen of Wands is a very, uh, as a person, she's fun loving, she's attractive, she's uh, career orientated, she's very busy, she's very vocal, she's very verbal, she's always all over the place, she's very capable. But in that busyness, what does fire do? It gets itself busy. It gets itself raging. So it's always on the go fire. If you set a fire in a house, it will just spread. So she spreads herself all over the place. And what this is saying, I feel, because this is you guys there, is the Queen of Wands. She's fire, your fire. With temperance, temper it out. The temperance card is about restraint. Okay? It's about being tactful. It's about being everything in moderation. It's about balancing mixing blending to create a perfect condition the uh, temperance card is about uh, also the healing of the spiritual self because it's uh, very much if we look here this person has two cups and they're pouring water never ending water the water is completely linked so the emotions are linked so this is perfect balance with this temperance card and it's almost like it's saying that we need restraint to curb the fire to blank out the fire we need the water to doubt the fire if you can see that so again what we're seeing is restraint water and fire cool and heat okay need to cool down here with these energies this is what it's really saying to me need to cool down with them the heat needs to go so i'm just sensing here that maybe for some of you guys it could be going on from now these readings guys let me just uh, uh tell you that uh, when we do the monthly readings, for me certainly, what I believe is that energies can start two weeks before the month begins, right up to two month, two weeks after the month uh, ends. So we're looking. For me, I feel that with these monthlies, we're looking at an eight month, an eight week span. So sometimes people will say, "Well, this didn't happen," or and it's like, "Wait, you've got eight weeks to go from when we get from from uh, two weeks before December or whenever the month is 
right to two weeks after that these things can actually occur. I've actually had looked at my own readings for my own star sign on YouTube and found that their energies were absolutely bang on, but they'd happened either two weeks before the month started or two weeks into the month or after the month or during the month, whatever it is. So eight weeks span. So again, we've got cooling of energies here over the over the uh, over the Christmas period. The next card we have here is the High Priestess. This is a Scorpio woman. So if we're looking at two women here, for example, the Queen of Wands could be you and uh, the High Priestess could be uh, a Scorpio woman because she does reference Scorpio women. So this could be two women who don't like each other very much. We've also got the Queen of Swords there. Now she is air. OK, so she's Gemini, Libra, um, Aquarius. And I always look at the Queen of Swords and reference her to the High Priestess because both of them use kind of inner logic and intuition and they think about things. Now, whilst the Queen of Swords might verbalise it because she is swords and she is communicative, the High Priestess generally holds it all in. OK, she doesn't verbalise anything. She, that's why she's, this is why she's classed as being a very kind of secretive, very mystical individual. She's very wise. She's very... um intelligent just the same as the queen of swords um and she uh uses her intuition and she really trusts her instincts so she's kind of the type of person who um balances her emotions again okay and stillness is the high priestess thing she sits kind of just very still and doesn't say much all right so she's very much the opposite to the queen of wands the queen of wands is very she can be very loud quite rambunctious she's kind of like the mother hen of the pack that type of thing whereas the high priestess is far more secretive this is why it's classed as being the secretive card this is why sometimes when you get the high priestess in a reading it can reveal something that needs to be brought out into daylight okay because she is the holder of secrets okay so i feel that um this card is saying that you need to be strong and you need to be wise about your actions in december or going on from now December is Christmas. Everybody wants joy. Everybody wants just a nice time around the Christmas period. And this is really saying to me that uh, it is best your strength and the high priestess's strength is in her stillness and it's in her quiet because she knows who she is. So she doesn't really need to kind of relay that to anybody else. She can just be really quiet in the stillness of her life. OK, she doesn't really need to kind of she brings stuff out. She brings out the secrets when she wants to bring out the secrets, not before and not after when she wants to do it. So this is really talking about wisdom. And if the Queen of Wands represents you and if there's another woman that maybe you don't get on with that represents the high priestess, could be a Scorpio lady. She usually represents the, the zodiac sign of Scorpio as a person. Then what you'll find is that the Seven of Cups is next. So these, this Seven of Cups is a card about options, having options available to us. Uh, in the Witch's Tarot, it's about wonderful, wonderful choices, okay? But I, I often look at these two together, that um, the High Priestess is the intuition, the uh, Seven of Cups is the dream card, as far as I'm, con uh, as far as I'm concerned. But I feel that uh, through tempering, through tempering, any kind of anxiety or problems maybe in the December time period or going on from now, there's going to be a lot of kind of wonderful things opening up for you, maybe in terms of even a friendship or just joy, okay? You might even receive a present. Probably not, but you never know. I just feel that uh, there is all sorts of things that is open to you, Aries, but you need to kind of restrain, restrain any kind of, I mean, you're not Leo, so you're not the lion, okay? But you are still fire and fire energies rage. OK, and when they rage, they rage. But it, it, during this reading, it's saying you need to temper everything. You need to just be still and don't be afraid. It's not showing weakness to be still, but it's showing restraint and intelligence to be still. And you will be rewarded in that state, in that in that stillness, because through that comes healing, through that comes uh, uh, support from the universe. And through that can, can possibly uh, options for friendships and options going forward are really good ones. The final two cards, guys, we have are the Justice card and the Four of Wands. What better cards to have as your final cards, Aries? Wonderful, wonderful cards because the Justice card is 
again a card of balance it's a card about uh, balance being restored and it must be restored because the universe likes balance it doesn't like things that are out of balance and if you can't fix something the universe will find a way to fix it for you all right so the universe always gives us a kick up the ass when it knows that it needs to bring us back into line so to me this is saying that through all of this reading if you temper the fire in you any uh, the fire energy in you aries to, to kind of you know attack or go for something or um be a part of friction if you temper that and you work through an issue if there are any issues over the christmas period with anyone whether that be in work your family your friends whatever this might be if you create balance this is your theme to create balance over the christmas period and it's funny how many balance cards we have we have temperance we've got the two of cups we've got the high priestess We've got the Justice card. And the High Priestess is about creating balance. She references the Minor Arcana number two. So, you know, uh, two of wands, two of swords, uh, two of cups, um, two of pentacles. Now, I know that all of those are about duality. And sometimes they can be about imbalance because they're always about trying to make a decision. But at the root of those cards is eventually about trying to create balance. Because when there is imbalance in something... We always try and go to creating the balance. So creating something that makes us feel on an even keel again. So those, even though those cards show, the Two of Cups is the only card really that shows balance as such. Balancing emotions. The Two of Wands is blockages. Um, the Two of Pentacles is trying to balance something or trying to make something work. Um, and the uh, Two of Wands is about sometimes about a fork in the road, but inevitably exploring a new journey. So at the root of all of these cards is trying to create something that is just and something that makes us feel kind of uh, normal and happy as human beings. This uh, Justice card also references High Priestess and the Judgment card, okay? So it's the law of karma, the idea of cause and effect, and how cause and effect really references that what you put out is what you get back okay so hence the reading you put out fire you put out anger you put out fight this is what you get back but if somebody is uh, coming at you or if somebody is trying to entice you into something it's really saying that if you want to create balance you need to kind of balance balance out your own emotions so it starts with you does that make sense Aries it all starts with you okay this card is about fairness so as I said it's connected to the high priestess and also the judgment card all right it's a neutral force okay in the end the universe will have its way if you can't create balance then it will do it for you or give you a kick up the ass to do it for you so at the root of this is balance and the final card is the four of wands you get all the energies right over the december period aries you're going to have a marvelous christmas because we do have the four of wands here the celebration card this is definitely a card of balance because it's about, uh, in the Rider weight, it's about having uh, struggled and worked hard and put a lot of effort into uh, making a life where you can eventually relax, having all the luxuries around you, having your family, having your friends around you and just really enjoying life and actually enjoying the fruit of your labours with people that are important to you, okay? So this is a very, very happy event. It's about expression. It's about sharing joy. So I feel that through all of this reading, Aries, what it's saying to me is if you create balance in the right way, if you're not, if you don't go off your, um, off your initial feelings, if you aren't kind of, uh, you know, if you don't just sort of go for an argument or go, go with your passions, allow your passions and your heart to rule you, allow, allow the fire within you to rule you. If you allow that, it can create disharmony. But if you hold back, if you're restraining, if you're thinking with your head rather than your heart, if you're calling out the fire energies over the Christmas period, if there are any fire energies going on, wherever that might be, then it will ensure that balance is restored. Lots of good things are happening for you over that period. And also, you're just going to have a wonderful, wonderful time. OK, Aries, that is your reading for the month of December 2015. Let me know if any of this resonated with you, if the two ladies resonated with you, the Queen of Wands and the High Priestess. If there's anything going on at the moment, let me know if this resonates with you. And I'd like to say thank you so much for using Carol's Universe and have a great day, guys. Take care. Bye bye.